Good morning, all. How are you? Hi, Kip. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Linda Clark, and hi, Judy Hatch. Barry and Margo, welcome. Kevin and Chris Vaughn. Hi, Judy Martin. Hi, Don Jones. Sherry Keys, good morning. Welcome to Monday. Uh, it is the last, it is the last Monday in, um, in February. It's February 28th, right? 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except for February, which has 28. Still remember that. So, uh, and hi, Don Jones. Yes, we certainly need to pray for Ukraine. The world is praying for Ukraine. Hi, Joan Riggs. Hi, Aunt Mary. Gene Hardwick, good morning to you. And hi, Ken Woods. Good to see you, too. So, um, again, it is Monday. And uh, we're just waiting for some other folks to come on. we still got a couple minutes to go. Uh, I'm coming to you from my home office. And uh, the... Um, uh, the reason why I'm here is, um, <laughs> God, we were laughing out over, I was texting, not going to be in the office today. I've got a real first world problem. Here's my problem. So, at our second house, <laughs> that's the first real problem with this. At our second house, you know, the, world, the world doesn't have a place to live for the most part. I've got a second house. So the second house, get this. The internet isn't working properly, and um, I have to go up there because the technician needs to come. There needs to be somebody there. Isn't that something else? What a problem to have. I'm almost embarrassed to admit that. But I will say this, is that uh, having the internet working up there is really good. I tried. Um, in the summertime, I tried to take an additional day off working up there, and it just doesn't work out sometimes doing devotions because the internet is just so bad that uh, it doesn't really go throw at any rate so we're doing this because my son needs it he's up there and uh, he's in his studies for his PA program and um, we need it too so when I called and complained and went through the whole thing they said well we can have somebody there tomorrow because we had they had a, somebody um, cancel out on them or else it's going to wait got to wait for three weeks so anyway so we are going to run up there quickly to take care of that hopefully quickly Meg and I and Cappy you want to see Cappy Cappy on this Monday Let's see there he is hey Cap look say hi to everybody you all right he is with me most days most days so, uh, I see that there's some uh, prayer requests coming in. I want to look at these. Um, I think I woke them up there, didn't I? Just look at that. Hi, Tracy Crutch. Nora Bentley's asking for prayers for Ava. Uh, this is the young young lady with, um, with brain cancer that uh, we have been uh, praying for, and she's had some wonderful results so um we need to we need to continue to pray for ava she's got a mra mri today and we pray we pray that um not only has the cancer not grown right but that it's that it's shrunk that's what we pray for so hi and carolyn thomas hi tracy crutz so good to see you on sunday i saw so many people more and more people are coming, are, are coming back to church on Sunday. That's wonderful, and um, we welcome you. Hope you feel safe. Uh, we know that the numbers are uh, in the right direction, although they pumped up a little bit, but they're still relatively low. And because of that, uh, we met uh, the, the the reopening committee met, and they are allowing now when you sit down, um, uh, you can remove your your um, face mask you'd still require a face mask to come in the church and in common areas but when you sit down in the sanctuary you can remove it 
we've been there before, right? And then the numbers went back up again. But here's something that's really new, is that we're now encouraging people who want to, to sing on the hymns. We do, a, we do require you to put your mask back on to sing because that projects a lot of air. And we know that that's the aerosol if there is going to be that. So there we go. There we go. So um, that was exciting. Um, so um, that was exciting. And um, we, um, we were able to do that on Sunday. We're going to continue to do that as long as the numbers allow us to, to be that way. Okay. And prayers for Norma uh, and Carrie as they begin another uh, critical ministry in Grief Share. Uh, that will be starting this week and um, will continue through uh, June 9th. Right? So we will do that. I've got somebody sending me a message here right now. So. I don't know. Somebody might be sending that. So, okay. All right, Paul Wolf, how are you? Hi, Joanne Butters. Good to see you. All these folks were up to 23 folks, and now it is 9.03. So, this last day of February, um, we're going to get moving on here, and... Um, and um, do our devotions for today, and then we're going to pray in a little bit. So, our devotions on this last day of February uh, is, we're going to open up with our morning song. I had my coffee here today. I hope you're someplace warm and comfortable. Maybe you have a morning beverage with you. And uh, So, as as we say goodbye to this month, right, and we welcome in another one, um, let's just put ourselves in a spot where we can receive God's word in the best way. I'm going to do my breathing discipline and encourage you. I'm going to breathe in for five, hold for five, and then exhale for five. Come, Lord Jesus. Our first reading today is Psalm 5. Let's listen for God's word for us today. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths, their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord, and cover them with favor as with a shield. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. You know, as we gather today and we still um, pray for those in Ukraine and with the Russian invasion, we don't delight uh, in, in hearing news of the success of Ukraine. I mean, we, we do that, but it's war. People are getting hurt and dying and being displaced. And um, as it continues on, there's going to be other problems, uh, humanitarian problems. The world seems to have um, really come together and uh, against Russia. And, of course, we have um, a leader there that we just don't know how he reacts. He doesn't react. I don't think he's going to react to how anybody sane. Would react. Um, 
I think he wants it all or, or, or else he doesn't care um, what happens to anybody. So I see this um, in when we read this. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. You know, in Ukraine is a center of Christianity for the Orthodox faith. And uh, it's Ukrainian Orthodox. There's a lot of nationalist churches, so the Orthodox Church, which is the Eastern Church, as opposed to the Western Church, which is kind of where we sit, the Eastern Church is relatively pure because it got cut off um, during the time of um, the Crusades and uh, through the Muslim interactions because they, many of them got overrun. So uh, Christianity uh, has stayed, we think, in a pretty pure way and high emphasis on the Holy Spirit. And of course, we do have Orthodox churches around here. If you're on Ford Road up in Dearborn, um, there's a huge uh, mosque there. Uh, but um, actually, uh, right next to it, uh, there's an Orthodox church. So, um, at any rate, the reason why I'm saying this is Ukraine has is, is got the Ukraine Orthodox Church. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Putin, um, his mother was very religious and a member of the Russian Orthodox Church, and he says that he is too. Um, but um, it's hard, hard to see that. But um, he's trying to, he's tried before, even before this started, uh, to pull the center of uh, Eastern European Orthodoxy away from Kiev in Ukraine and, and move it into Moscow. So, um, anyway, kind of as we read about Ukraine and pray about Ukraine, it's inter we need to know that there's an awful lot, an awful lot of uh, Christians there. We pray for them. All right, let's move on to Proverbs. Proverbs? And it's verse 27, 1 through 6, and then continue on with 10 through 12. So here we go. Let's listen for God's word for us today. It's wise words from the wisdom literature. And this one um, continues on a little bit. So, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another praise you, not of your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Better is open to rebuke than hidden love. Well meant are the wounds a friend inflicts, but profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Do not forsake your friend or the friend of your parent. Do not go to the house of your kindred in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is nearby than kindred who are far away. Be wise, my child, and make my heart glad, so that I may answer whoever reproaches me. The clever see the danger and hide, but the simple go on and suffer for it. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So uh, if you follow along with us every day, you'll see that, I mean, I talked about Proverbs and the fact that they're kind of these pithy sayings that are kind of scrunched together. And this today was an example of that. It's not all of it because some of it hangs together into longer passages. These are kind of more just boom, in your face. They would make great signs, right? They would make great signs that we could hang around us. The clever see danger and hide, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Better is a neighbor who is nearby than kindred who are far away. Good friends and good neighbors. Okay. And a lot of things about boasting and jealousy and things like that. All right, we'll move on to our New Testament. And we're in Philippians, right? And um, Philippians is a letter that Paul writes. And... Um, he is imprisoned, like he has in some other ones. And he's in prison, and this church 
he's writing in response to something that this church in Philippi sent him. And we think that, uh, that he mentions it. Um, uh, now, you've got to understand, Paul in prison is not like in a dungeon. He's like under house arrest because he's a Roman citizen. He's awaiting his trial, probably in Rome. So, um, in, so the church in Philippi cares about him, so they, they send somebody. They say, you go to Paul in Rome, give him these things. They gave him some money. So Paul writes this letter. It's the letter of joy because it's so joyful. He's so joyful about the church in Philippi. Unlike many letters that he writes to churches where he's praising them and remembering things, but he's got, he's got a beef with them about something. This one's a letter of joy. Even, although Paul is Paul, he's always going to throw something in there. So, but, uh, so, Sherry, hold on. This is a short reading. We'll get through it. All right, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And I'm going to tell you that there's a, there's a portion here that we think is one of the most ancient hymns of the Christian church, that Paul reverts to it. And uh, it, it's this common thing. It's prob we don't, we've lost the melody, the tune. We don't know what it is, but we think it was a hymn that was sung by the earliest church. And um, it, it will happen. Um, um, it happens in Philippians, right? And this is verse 9. And starting, right, uh, starting with verse 6. I'll, I'll pause and tell you when we get to these things. There's a thing called the kenosis. Kenosis means self-emptying. And I'll explain it afterwards. But see if you can't pick up on it. Here we go. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Here you go, there's the joy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Same. Be together. Verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. Regard each other as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. I'm going to pause here. This is the kenosis. This is um, an understanding of Jesus being God, but then taking on the form of human. And why? Here we go. Verse 6. Who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Pause. This is verse 9. This is the hymn, the Christ hymn. Therefore God has also exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's the end of the hymn. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. Isn't that beautiful? Lots of stuff in there. Um, so, and maybe that's one of the things that we'll work on in uh, Lent. I want to have Wednesday Zoom calls and, um, so that we can talk. Um, and I don't have a program. I'm going to pick stuff, but we're going to talk. Because I think the most important thing in Lent is not to be instructed, but to feel. But to feel. So we're going to see if we can't uh, put some things in front of you and make you think. And if you'd like to talk about it, if you're willing to talk about it, that'd be great. But the biggest thing is that you experience it, right? So that's what we want to try to do. And that, won't, that will start a week from this Wednesday. Okay. We'll try 7 p.m. How's that? Eastern time. All right. So he's saying, look, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
What he's saying is, look, I have, I have, I have instructed you. I've sat with you. I've walked with you. You can do this yourself, right? You got to be. When we say fear and trembling, you know, it's got to. We've got to recognize it's bigger than us, but we also got to know that the love of God is there and is going to carry us through this. So the God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So go, do it, do it. All right, we'll move on to our gospel reading. It's a short one. It's the Gospel of John, and it's verse. Uh, chapter 18 verses 15 through 18 and then picking up again with 25 through 27 and um, so um, this is, comes back if you were with us on Sunday um, I hope I hope I hope the, the sermon might have touched you um, uh, I work I, I, I kind of worked on that one a little bit longer than usual and and went a little bit deeper i think than some things because again it was the transfiguration this part where jesus uh, becomes uh, uh god i mean assumes his divine place right and god speaks and so we've got you know uh, we've got the three disciples with him, and it's like why did this do happen i mean it didn't happen because jesus needed it it happened because god was sending a message to these three people Peter, John, and James, and and um, so we you know we talked about that a little bit. So, but now, and I talked on Sunday, and I said you know, but here's here's the here's the failing, right? Peter, you know, who was so um, excited by this, he, he has this silly thing and says, "Hey, Lord, let me make a, a one dwelling here around this mountaintop, one for you, and one for uh, Moses, and one for Elijah," and and. and and so you think that this would, he knows who Christ is, right? And he said, boy, i got to stand by him. But then I mentioned in the sermon, but does he? And do we? Because then on the night that Jesus is betrayed, Jesus says, you're going to betray me. Well, this is what we're reading about now. Right? So if you were with us on Sunday and you remember that from the sermon, here's exactly where it happens. Let's listen now for the word of the Lord, the Gospel of John. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Jesus tells Peter this, uh, maybe, you know, in the Catholic face, Peter, you know, he, he says who Jesus is. And Jesus said, like, Peter, you are the rock. You are the foundation. On you, I, will, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And, um, and then, uh, you know, he becomes the first pope, you know, after that. He ends up in Rome and killed in Rome. And by the way, they found his, they found his bones right underneath the altar at, um, at, in the, in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, just where he said they'd be. But, um, so here they were, and um, he says, after, after he has this thing, Lord, you are the Messiah. You're the Son of God. He says, very good. Great are you, Peter. But then he tells Peter later on, he says, you know, you say that you are, you are my disciple and that you love me, but I will tell you that before this night is over, you're going to deny me three times. This is it. Before the cock crows. So there it goes. Wow, right? 
And then we see why. And now we have this other disciple. We talk about Simon Peter and another disciple. And it says that that other disciple was known to Caiaphas, the high priest. They're in his courtyard. And uh, so he's allowed in, right? And then he goes over and he gets Peter and brings him in. So um, this is this mysterious other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And we think it might be John, right? Um, but uh, it also talks about... So just a pretty interesting one of the beauties of the gospel of john he gives us insights that other that the other gospel writers don't uh, it's just so valuable a good way to start off so here's our question right if peter who saw things and touched things and did that if 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 he can deny christ when it's inconvenient can we okay carrie is doing our Putting those up. Very good. All right. Um, hi, Barbara Wolf. Hi, Linda Wolf. Joy Amber, good morning. And I think that's it. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm not getting all of the I'm not getting all of the anything beyond the Philippians over there in the chat. So I think something happened to the chat. I know I'm still on. Okay. So here we go. We're gonna pray. Now, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. So um, we welcome you uh, between five and eight. You know, and if, if you can't make it between 5 and 8, you like in position ashes, let me know. I'm, I'm going to be at the church. So at least until probably about 2 o'clock. So um, we have that. So, but between 5 and 8, we'll be there in the sanctuary. And uh, because of everything else, we're not going to, I'm not going to use a, a Q-tip, you know, do it. We'll do it with a finger. And uh, I will impose ashes on anybody that would like it. And uh, also drive through. So that's Wednesday evening. That's this Wednesday. That's uh, Ash Wednesday, the kickoff to Lent. Okay? So let's, um, um, let's get on with our day here. Let's pray. So we need to pray for little Ava, right? We need to pray for all who are anxious. Uh, all we need to pray for Ukraine. Uh, pray for me, right? Pray for me for some traveling mercies. Pray for Meg, who's got to be in the car with me, right? Three hours each way. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being with us today, for yesterday, for the days that are coming. And we're told, uh, Lord, we need to live more in the moment and into today, not worrying about tomorrow. So, Lord, that takes trust, it takes faith, it takes hope. And uh, as we're beginning our uh, entry into Lent, we just ask that you uh, continue to be with us. You know, there's going to be a lot of parties on Tuesday as people uh, uh, celebrate Fat Tuesday and they go through the tradition of getting rid of the uh, excess fat and lard uh, and, and flour that's, uh, that's in their kitchens. There's going to be a lot of punch keys that are eaten. And Lord, um, that serves a purpose. But let us use that as that our entrance into a discipline so that we are prepared for Easter, that we can might even understand, even on a small level, just how great the sacrifice that Jesus made for us was. And as we gather here today, we pray for those who are sick. As I said, we're praying for little Ava, that uh, she's going to have another test today, an MRI. We, Lord, we pray for great results. And we also want to pray for all who are anxious. We want to thank uh, Norma and Carrie for their wonderful ministry to the people who have lost ones through grief share. We pray uh, as they kick off, uh, as they kick off their uh, new session, that there will be people who will be drawn, who are in need. And Lord, uh, nobody, nobody gets over it. Nobody gets over the loss of a good one, but they can put it in a better perspective. So, and they can be grateful the time that they did have so 
Uh, we also need to pray, uh, I see, for Lee Ross, who is in the hospital. <clears throat> so we pray for them over in Concord. We thank, uh, thank you for the presence of all people here. And Lord, we just pray that you'll lead us uh, through this day so that we can come together again tomorrow and offer you our thanks and praise as we read your words. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, all. God bless you all. Love you. And um, the um, uh, I hope everything's all right with everyone. Okay. Uh, remember, I love you. God loves you. So do we all here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. We'll be with you tomorrow morning. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.